What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. More models and new information has come out that we absolutely need to share with you. So the first thing we need to talk about is the 18Z HER has just came out, ladies and gentlemen. And the 18Z HER is around, uh, goes out to about 1 o'clock on Tuesday. And while we wor- we're not expecting really any thunderstorms to happen at that point, here's what we are looking at. And this is an early indication of something I want to show you. This is what we have right here, and this says of 1 p- uh, p.m. On, on Tuesday, folks. First of all, if you take a look at these wind barbs across this whole supercell composite area right here, that's directional wind shear right there. That is, like, because before we were looking at more speed shear or directional shear, we're not entirely sure what was going on with that. And the NAM was showing a lot of directional shear, but now the HER has come out, and an early indication according to this is that the, the, the shear with this is going to be directional. Now, what does that have to do with tornado development? Basically, when it, co- when it comes to tornado development, folks, if you see directional shear with that, that means you're going to see more tornadoes. If you see very strong shear, you're going to see violent tornadoes, potentially. And if you're going to be seeing very strong directional shear, a combination of the two, we're looking at a potentially violent, a lot of violent tornadoes with this. Now, keep in mind... I'm not saying we're, this is what we're going to be seeing exactly. We're, this is still two days out. However, there are early indications that the NAM and the HER, as well as other models, are starting to kind of agree that this is looking potentially really bad. And one of those models is the NAM Nest right here. And this is what we have right here for you uh, folks right here. The NAM Nest, as, uh, as more of this comes out, it's showing a lot of disturbing stuff going on in western Missouri, uh, central, what, central Missouri and western Missouri over here. If we take a look at the supercell composite right here, the supercell composite is approaching 20 in a lot of these areas. Also, one other thing to take a look at, the shear, you know, the shear here is still quite directional, and we'll see that in the soundings right there. Take a look at some of this. We're approaching 30 a uh, uh, storm a uh, supercell composite right there which is absolutely crazy right here significant tornado parameter these maps have been not the best to us so far however we can really sh- what we can show you is just a lot of stuff is going on with this like the tornado per- uh, tornado parameter we're approaching eight uh, eight and nine in all these areas and I was seeing some stuff earlier that was uh, approaching 10 and even exceeding 10 in a lot of these areas which is absolutely crazy with this. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is some of the soundings. And these soundings are absolutely shocking. This is the first sounding out of Missouri, ladies and gentlemen. This is out of uh, central Missouri, north central Missouri, rather. And first of all, take a look at the SRH. The SRH is over 1,000 meters uh, squared per second squared. I have never seen a sounding anything like that. And... If that holds, that is indicating potentially very vi- a very violent situation going on. Now, take that with a grain of salt. But another thing to take a look at is the surface to one kilometer she- uh, shear is 28 knots, which that's all right. The surface to three kilometer shear is 83 knots. That is a very excessive reading that f- close to the uh, to the surface. And surface to 6 kilometers is almost 115. And if you take a look at this stuff right here, this is all directional as well. Now, the potential hazard type with this is PDS Tornado. And the potential for this is completely off the charts, according to what the NAM Nest is saying. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is this one. This was taken uh, This was taken near the Missouri-Iowa border right here. The SRH is is not nearly as extreme. I think the SRH in that last little bit was a very extreme value. I think over a thousand SRH, in my opinion, is going to be way too excessive until I see some more, uh, some more data proving that. I think a more accurate estimate around that area is around like four to five hundred, which is still pretty extreme. But still, um, if we take a look at the surface to one kilometer, thirty nine knots, forty eight knots, surface to three kilometer, eighty one knots, surface to six kilometer. Yep, that's pretty good for supercell development. Hazard type PDS tornado right here. Once again, the uh, if, uh, once again the probabilities are off the charts of a significant tornado happening. 
Now, this is still two days out, and until we see more data come in, we're not still not going to be 100% sure what's going on with this. But the last sounding we need to t uh, talk about real quickly, we're looking, this was taken in southeastern Iowa, similar area to where they got a lot of tornadoes on Friday, and the cape with this is around 2,400 joules per kilogram. Lapse rates 8.1, the lapse rates before 8.9 and 8.3, so that's pretty excessive right there. And the SRH is go, goes up to 765 meters second per se, uh, uh, se, uh, sorry meters squared per second squared at three kilometers. 31 knots at surface to one kilometer. Surface to three kilometers is 69 knots, and six kilometers is 91 knots. All of this is directional as well. So th this is why I need to show you in the. EF2 probabilities are absolutely off the charts once again in this sounding right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take a look uh, to just take a look at all this and I, first thing I want you to do is is just remain calm about all of this. What I did show you were just a few samplings of some potential scenarios that we are looking at. This isn't all set in stone yet. We still have a couple of days left to go with this. However, some of the things I have been seeing are quite disturbing. The first thing is there's a lot more directional shear than there was last time. We're looking at directional shear of almost 90 degree angles, which that is that's as good as you can get with directional. Speed shear is also pretty good as well. So all I can say is, is that if you still have your preparedness plan and you know what to do after the outbreak on Friday... I would start getting that ready in case something bad really does happen once again. And I will continue to update you with all the information, but you have to promise me you're not going to panic. You're going to try to remain calm, and I'll keep giving you all the information you need. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and end this video right here. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a like on the video. Stay safe.